talk about a huge story that's been blowing up in Washington, D.C., the Howard University Medical School. Of course, they graduate more black doctors than any medical school in the country. And the Washington, D.C. government wants to and needs to build a new hospital in the section of the city most mostly populated by African Americans. But the hospital they have chosen to build this new facility does not really want to allow doctors and staff from the Howard University Hospital to work at the new hospital. The folks at Howard University believe this will threaten the very existence of this medical school crucial to the African American medical community. Joining us right now is Trayon White, the DC council member who proposed an amendment that would include Howard University in the hospital plan and the dean of the Howard University Medical College Dr. Hugh Mighty. Uh, Councilman, I want to start with you. And so, first of all, where did this idea come from? Where did, and and how much power is being ceded to the hospital as opposed to the city saying, wait a minute, the Howard doctors should have uh, credentials and the right to practice at this new hospital? Thanks, Roland. Um, I think it goes back to uh, the history of trying to draw partners to an area that's been underserved and under resource for a long time and I think with that the government um, we rallied to put 300 million dollars into this particular project and with that it became more attractive I believe that to my knowledge Howard submitted not one I think two or three proposals that did not get favored and uh, University Health Services put a proposal up as well in which the government deemed more stronger I, I don't know I'm not I don't negotiate that but that started a conflict Howard felt they were not getting the support they needed to ensure that their doctors were able to participate in this new hospital coming to the east end of the city. And so um, what was the decision made yesterday? Because I got I was contacted by uh, uh, the president of Howard University, other officials. They were, of course, a strong social media uh, focus. So what happened yesterday? What was the decision of the city council? So yesterday, uh, Council Member Gray, who was leading this effort since he was the mayor of Washington, D.C., um, help to facilitate the conversation on the dais of what should happen with the hospital. Um, at the end of the conversation, I put forth an amendment to ensure that Howard had the opportunity that their doctors can practice there and also do training there. Um, that bill uh, got passed unanimously, and, and also Council Member Alyssa Silverman put up a bill that ensured that the workers there were unionized. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, Council Member Vincent Gray tabled the table the whole uh, bill into the next council cycle which takes place on the 18th of December. Uh, Dr. Hugh Mighty, um, why has Howard reacted in such a visceral way to uh, this new hospital? Um, good evening. Thank you. Um, Howard currently has the responsibility for training 740 black physicians. We train the largest number of phys black physicians in this country. And for realistically 150 years, we have been here serving this city and being a safety net hospital for the city. So there are two things to, to think about for our city. One is Council Member White did a very strong and, and brave thing for us by introducing that amendment to the bill to ensure that Howard gains access. The reason Howard needs to gain access to the new hospital is that one third of the patients who are now seen by Howard will be moving to that new hospital when the hospital comes online. Howard needs to have those patients <clears throat> to continue to train its students and residents. And so if there's an exclusive thing done where Howard University doesn't have access to that, <clears throat> you're one, threatening the existence of the current Howard University Hospital, and ultimately you're threatening the ability of Howard to train its students and its residents, i.e., the ability to produce black doctors in the not just for the district but in the nation so there are two things at at work here one is certainly we support a new hospital the citizens in southeast dc deserve a new hospital where they can get care close at home to them but we uh, oppose the thought that the new hospital means that howard can't be a part to deliver that so you can't exclusively say you can't have academics and the hospital we think you can have both uh so councilman white What's next? How does this fully get resolved? So I, re I read a statement that University uh, Health Services issued today from GW saying that if we force them to do business with Howard, the deal will be off the table. Um, so it's going to put a lot of pressure 
on the members to make some decisions. I'm still pushing forward uh, with supporting the, the notion that in a predominantly African American community, we should have doctors of color, uh, point blank. Um, I, I'm going to walk, walk back in the room and, and push my colleagues to think the same and hope we can come to some agreements by the 18th to ensure that this hospital go forward. But yesterday we had two people shot in Ward 8. The day before, another person shot in Ward 8. So the need uh, for trauma services, we have some of the highest health disparities in the country. We need this hospital to go through, and I'm sure what that's going to look like. We're looking forward to negotiate. Dr. Mighty, what's next for Howard University? How are you going uh, to uh, keep pressing and pushing this issue? So we're, we're going to continue to work with the council members and with the district government and the mayor's office to, again, make sure that we're party to any final deal at the table so that we can be there to provide care that we've provided for probably the longest of anyone in the city who still exists as one of our hospitals who have been around for 150 years just recently um, determined that they were going to close their doors. So we want to be there, but we are more than happy to work with everyone to just make sure that we're ensure that this deal is done properly. All right, then. Gentlemen, we certainly appreciate you joining us uh, here on the show. Thank you so very much. All right, folks, back to our Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Transitioning to the holiday season, this time we start thinking about giving and sharing. Sometimes the best gift that you can give someone is an opportunity that could potentially change their lives. That's why our friends at Transatlantic Real Estate have created an investment opportunity for the everyday investor. It involves legal marijuana and crowdfunding. And we all know that legal marijuana has created one of the fastest growing industries in this country. We also know that crowdfunding makes it easy to be an early investor of an opportunity. Now, it's no brainer, folks. Here, This is very simple, but it gets even better. Transatlantic real estate is different, and they have a business model that is very simple to understand. They buy land that supports marijuana grow operations and lease it to licensed high-paying tenants. Don't you hear that? You are investing in the landlord of a licensed marijuana farm in a high-growth market. Now, for a limited time, you can invest as little as $300 up to $10,000 before the company goes public. Now, here's some more good news. They have recently extended the offer, which means you still have time if you take action now. Keep in mind, you must complete and confirm your application to participate, so be sure to complete that process. Folks, don't spend all of your money over the holidays uh, and end up with empty pockets. Instead, get a return on your investment. You could also consider making an investment for someone special. How's that for a holiday gift? To get started, go to MarijuanaStock.org. That's MarijuanaStock.org for you to get in the game and do it today. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video.